coming in and now our Facebook Live is live. Hi everybody. Hello everybody. Ciao Belli. Ciao Belli. It's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? So you've already heard of Ciao Belli so you know that there are foreigners in the apartment which means everything is beautiful. Um, so we want to welcome you to our show. Let me see who has popped in already immediately. Richard Koch, also uh, a foreigner. He's Dutch. So Richard, you're going to love tonight's show. It's, I'm calling it imported art. Um, so we, uh, Ed Kutu has joined us. He is from Blade Salon in Connecticut, uh, in Rocky Hill. And Ed Zito has joined us. Victor Flores. Hi, Victor Flores. Uh, Victor, we have to talk about getting on the show. We got to get a date down. He's an amazing chef. Um, all right. So I just want to, Hector Garcia has joined us now. Radio listeners, if you are listening on the radio and you're saying, why is she naming all these names? Because uh, we are Facebook living as well as going live on the radio. And when we do that, a lot of our friends pop up or regulars that listen every week. And so I personally like to acknowledge them because they have, uh, they're very loyal and sweet to come back every week. And lots of times they have questions and things like that. And I want to shout them out. So we are on Armed Radio, armeddigitalmedia.com, armradioglobal.com. If you want to listen live on the radio uh, from your computer, uh, anywhere you go, you can always listen live Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. If you miss the show, oh, my God, Gina Savino has joined. I don't know if you guys know what happens here. She is my cousin in Boston. When Gina Savino joins, we clap. Gina yeah. Savino. Oh, my God. And Dave Downs, Dave Downs, I am so happy to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Wait till you see what I have cooked tonight, Dave Downs. Or, or well, I didn't cook all of it, but Michael Brebner has joined us. Kia Nel Michael Brebner is in Massachusetts. Kia Nelson is in Philadelphia. Gina, love you. I'm so glad you're here early. Okay. Ciao, Gina. Ciao, Gina. Bye, well, Gina. Gina, just get ready to swoon because these – I have also hashtag beautiful boys <laughs> because these are beautiful boys. Maria, yeah, they're like bellissimo. Yours. Never like your voice. Oh my God. <laughs> now this little rascal, Massimiliano Sims, ciao. Is, ciao, is from Napoli. Is that correct? Sit in Napoli. Yo, I'm from Naples, Italy. You can speak Italian or English. Napoletano for all uh, the guys and ladies and the ladies and gentlemen that are there, they speak so, so Italian. Si, si. Sono di Napoli. Eh, vivo a tutto New familia York. mia ah, parlo in italiano viene, viene qui so my whole, my whole family will be look. they speak Italian a lot of our friends very beautiful things I'm here in America since four years and I love America and America loves you oh. how about that <laughs> thank you oh I my god some love I need kisses <laughs> oh don't say that because you. there'll be people outside the building <laughs> well Karen, I'm looking forward to it. okay Karen Vergana has joined uh, Isabella Raskowski was really my cousin Marisa she has joined us. Marisa, wait till you see these beautiful, beautiful boys tonight. You're going to love them. Ciao, Bello. And uh, Annette Zito, state sta parlando. Ciao, Bello. Ciao. Oh, my God. Bill Goffey, Napoli. Yes, Bill. You would... Rick Crom has joined us. Hi, Rick Crom. Hi, we Rick. were talking about you earlier. Our mutual friend who is wonderfully talented and a wonderful person. Okay. Michael Rizzo has joined us. Hi, Michael Rizzo. Oh, my God. And Leo Rodriguez. All together. Ready? Leo Rodriguez. Fantastic. Leo is what I call our accidental intern. He put together a really cute little promo. Did you see it? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, both yeah. you guys. Really cute. He puts together our promos and all that stuff. And if you also mention something uh, like a, a, a .com, he will pull it up. Amazing. Great. Actually, you know what, Leo? Actually, after I'm going to ask Maria your contact because I'm working on something. Maybe you can have. Oh no, Leo is amazing. Yes. Yes. You so you're gonna ask for his contact. Yes. Leo, are you prepared for that? <laughs> May I give Massimiliano your contact? Leo is swooning Something right now. Very sexy. He's fanning himself. Something very sexy. Oh, he'll make he'll do it sexy. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna actually start. If it's okay with you, Brady, I'm gonna start with Massimiliano because he is on fire. Yeah. Oh, He's yes. on fire. And I think we first of all, I said, Massimiliano, can you be here by 8:30? No problem. He just, like an Italian movie star, just came in. I couldn't even be mad at him because he brought me a present. He yes. smells delicious. Yes. And Brady and I noticed he has very cute glasses on. Beautiful. Brady tried to ask him if he could have them already. Okay. Udanian Mesa has that that's my girlfriend. Hi, honey. How are you? <laughs> Kenny Holcomb has joined us from Tennessee. Hi, Kenny. We love Kenny. I called you today, Kenny. I don't know if you got that message. All right. So much to talk about. Now, Massimiliano. Mm -hmm. Yes. We met about four years ago, right? When you first got here. Yes. And I was in love with him immediately because he looks like my cousin Robbie. 
now Roberto, my, my cugino Roberto, you look like you could be in my family, in that family. Uh, now, there, we're from Avellino, so that's very close to where you live, right? Yeah, it's about an hour away. Okay, know? about an hour away. Yeah, by now, car. by car. Well, the Italian, the way the Italians drive, it's an yeah, hour away, so which means it's two crazy. and a half hours so, from us. Yeah, perfect. The Italians you, drive like that. Perfect example. Right? Of that. Yeah, exactly. yeah, Italian. You know. So he's like an Italian. Uh, now, listen, I was going to say an Italian movie star, but you, would you consider yourself an actor, a singer? So what category would you put yourself in? Uh, honestly, I start everything as a singer. So myself, I consider myself as a singer, but mostly when I introduce myself to people, I introduce myself as a superstar. Oh. No, well, I'm sorry. I'm sounding a little bit cocky. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I introduce to people as a live performer. Right, okay. So I will, my intention is like to be able to be dancing, singing, and acting in the same time. Like, you know. A triple threat, they triple call threat, it. Yeah, and then playing also an instrument. So that's what I'm actually working on right now. Do you play an instrument? I play a bit of piano and guitar as well. Oh. You okay, know, beautiful. Yeah. Michael Vaccaro has joined us. Hi, Michael Vaccaro. Ciao. Su Ciao. Suzanne uh, Brown has joined us. Rita Crignali, you missed the introduction. You'll have to go back. I have beautiful uh, uh, imported talent tonight. Uh, Brady is Canadian. Massimiliano is Italian. Mm -hmm. He has now told us many things, but you'll have to go back and listen. My cousin Rina, Rina Cugnali is Abruzzese. Ah, ciao, Rina. La famiglia de Abruzzi. Ciao, Rina. Forza Abruzzo. Rina Forza Abruzzo. Abruzzo. See, yes. she's loving it. Ma a Mandar has joined us. Mandar Chick Magnet. <laughs> he is Indian and he can dance. I, I, I mean, I, I don't even know what to you do with it. go and see her. <laughs> listen, I am going to have a party on June 11th of all my regulars that listen. And I'm, Mandar, you are invited. I am put, sending out an evite because all the regulars that listen, Mandor is going to have to dance. You're going to have to dance, Mandor. He's a chick magnet. Everywhere you see him on Facebook, there's women around him. Wow. <laughs> it's just, I don't know how you do it. Okay. Uh, uh, Forta e gentile, she said. Okay. Uh, Rina said. Yeah. Now, so you came from Italy. Now, how did you learn to speak English so beautifully? Because your English is beautiful. Thank you, Maria. I was actually, I learned and uh, I grew up with all the, um, uh, I was like, a, and I was amazed by the pop culture, American pop culture. I actually was a great fan of Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears. Of course. Like when I was 11, so I was like, the, you know, and I always wanted to be, to be part of a boy band. And from there, I was actually, actually listening a lot of uh, songs, uh, movies, and from there I pick up my English, but mostly lived abroad like never in Italy like I was living in uh, London for a bit oh uh, like really in, uh, okay Shanghai for another bit wow in China for a couple of years and I was surrounded by foreign year like you know and that's what I improved and I picked up my English mostly uh, very 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 good now Brady we're gonna flip over to you we're gonna go back and forth Brady you are Canadian yeah and I asked you earlier if you speak French and you said you do oui, <laughs> this is the sexiest show ever. <laughs> Everyone is fanning themselves now. We have Italian speaking, we have French, we have English. Oh my God. So they've traveled the world. Uh, so you grew up in what part of Canada did you grow up in? Because it's huge. Canada's gigantic. Yeah, I actually grew up in a, so a smaller part of Canada. I grew up in Prince Edward Island, Canada. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Um, I've seen pictures. Pretty cold uh, for the most part. Most of Canada is like that. For the most part yeah but um yeah so, I grew up so does this weather seem like like a joke to you when when people say oh my god i'm freezing do yeah. you think like because to me canadians always have like a windbreaker on in in january oh it's true yeah, yeah. i mean honestly like we like <laughs> i see people in shorts i think they get like in vancouver there was one time i saw people wearing shorts one day it was like one day it was like maybe 30 degrees or something celsius but or celsius yeah yeah i get, I get confused whenever. now do you guys have we have fahrenheit you have Celsius, Celsius and, yeah. and Italians have Celsius. Celsius really We're bad. the only ones that are holding out. <laughs> so I meant to say 30 degrees Fahrenheit. See? Out okay. Of Canada. Right, right. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. So Massimiliano said that he was uh, attracted to that whole boy band culture. Mm -hmm. What was your um, what was your draw to music? Um, it was my dad, actually. My dad is an incredible guitarist. He oh, plays really? Guitar. Yeah, he's like insane. And he'll tell you to this day, he's very humble. He'll go, Yeah, I'm not as good as I used to be. And I'm like, Dad, that's not true. You're pretty incredible. He's been playing guitar for his entire life. He learned by himself at age nine, I think is what he said. Um, and he always had a love for music. So I would, when I was growing up, he would go away on the weekends and he would be playing with the band and then also driving trucks and stuff like that during the week, right? That's what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. It's part of being an artist and performer. And 
so then after a while, you know, when I decided I took a liking to music, that was like, oh, you, you, you're a good singer. Let's work on that. And then I wanted to play drums, you know? Wow. I, so, I love started, percussion. Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite. So all because of my dad really was like the main in interest. And I think whenever I saw like, you know, for me growing up seeing like Stevie Wonder, for example, I was just always like, oh, you're so good. And I yeah. just don't know, you know, how I'm so drawn to you. You know, it's just incredible how you're such a great performer. So, oh, okay. I, and so it came, it was because of your dad that you were attracted to music. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And Massimiliano, anyone in your family a musician mm -hmm. besides you? No, my grandmother was a little, she used to play a little bit of piano. Oh, really? But uh, honestly, nobody in my family was is an artist. And actually, I'm um, the black sheep of uh, the family. So. Well, well, the black sheep of the family is usually the most interesting one, nice. if you ask me. Yes. <laughs> I've always thought that. When people say I'm the black, I always think, yeah, that's why you're in New York. I, I think this is a land of black sheep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we you know, and I always say that what I love about New York is there are no misfits because there are no norms. Yes, it's There's ever no changing. It's just like it's so fluid and it's so beautiful. And it's like when you're making art, it's it's always changing, you know. Um, now, uh, so what made you start to be attracted? What was it? Was it a person that said, hey, you're talented, you should start singing? Was it that you just put your mind to it, what made you decide that you were going to start singing? Me? Yeah. I mean, I actually, honestly with you, I was always drawn by music in general. Um, my dad also has a great taste in music, I believe. Like, he used to listen a lot to George Michael. I uh, know you love George Michael. We'll I love George Michael. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Um, and Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, Lionel Richie, all the time. And even Celine Dion, my R. Carey, Whitney Houston, all these amazing voices. And yeah. I always, wanted to have a good voice. I always wanted to be able to sing and to express myself to singing. And since so the beginning of my life, I said like, I really would like to sing and really would like to deliver a message to my voice. And that's what happened. And since I was a little kid, I started to play piano, I was 11. And my mom wanted me to play piano. And then after that, I started guitar, a little bit of saxophone. And when I really took this seriously, meaning that I really said, this is what I wanted to do. It was like when I was 20, 21 years, years old, like almost 10 years ago when I was in China. And I started taking lessons with different coaches and producing uh, and then going around like uh, performing in events and showcases. Wow. wow, amazing. Now, um, on this show tonight, I, w I really want them both to perform. And I, I know that what happens is we start talking and then we run out of time. Peter Feliciano has joined us. Uh, Manny Soto has joined us. So I'm going to actually put it out to you. I'd love for both of you to perform. Who would like to go first? Whichever one. What do you think, Massimo? I would like to go first. You yeah. want to go first? Yes. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do, stay right there. Brady, I, th I, I think we, we can switch for Absolutely. just for this. Yeah, yeah. We'll switch. Usually I put the taller person in the back. I said, Brady, you and I are shorties. <laughs> we're going to we sit are. in the front. <laughs> Massimiliano, siete de qui, mi amore. Yes. And now I have, because he does play piano, but it's so far away and I don't want him to, his back to be to the camera. So I'm going to pull up a track uh, to um, Faith. Let me make sure this comes through. Hold on. Everybody just hang in there. I got to get this right because I um, I just want to make sure that I get this right. I can also do a cappella if you want. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. I, I oh, think if you can do a cappella, that is it the would most... be even better, right? And I have the I have a little drum set here. But actually, yes, I would like to do a little uh, Faith is one of my favorite songs, like it's from George Michael. You know what? Every time I hear Faith, I think of you. Oh darling, that's a compliment. It's the truth. Yeah, because it's such a great I mean the meaning behind it and but also maybe it was more sexual, it was more like about relationship, but I think that we can all connect to the words faith. Absolutely. Because faith is like, you know, having faith is what really make us move forward in life. Absolutely. So that's why I connect to the song so much and I love it. So this is for you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Massimiliano Chimes with faith. Okay. Well, I guess it would be nice if I could touch your body. I know not everybody has got a body like you. Oh, but I got to think twice before I give my heart away. And I know all the games you play because I play them too. 
oh, but I need some time off from that emotion. Time to pick my heart up off the floor. Oh, baby, I reconsider my foolish notion. Well, it takes a strong man, baby, but I'm showing you the door. Cause I gotta have faith. Ooh, I gotta have faith. Because I gotta have faith, faith, faith. I gotta have faith, faith, faith. Wow, Massimiliano Sims, bellissimo mio amore. Grazie, bellissimo. grazie Annette, Mamma. grazie Drivi, amore, io ti I amo. Feel like I, I, have, come to you. I feel like we are in an Italian movie. I love it, it's fantastic. Later on, Massimiliano, I'm going to show you. Tengo uh, Anna Magnani qui. Bellissima. Bellissima. Anna Magnani. Anna Magnani is my favorite Italian actress. Oh my God, look who just joined us, Darius. Oh, Darius. Darius. Darius, how are you? Okay, we are going to switch bye, around. Bye. So he's going to perform. Yes, oh my God, Massimiliano. That was so sexy. Oh yeah. Brady, I'm going to be off frame for you because you got your guitar. Um, and we'll leave Massimiliano uh, in the background there. Beautiful. Yeah. How exciting is this? Oh my God, I'm having so much fun already. <laughs> as soon as music starts, I'm happy. <laughs> and then, uh, now we have everybody popping on. You guys having a good time? I told you they were amazing. This is incredible. Okay, yeah. Brady, see. Why are we able to drink the beer now? You can drink yeah. the beer. That's why I put it there for you. Is he so cute? He asked me permission to drink his beer. <clears throat> of know. course you can drink right it. In America. Uh, you, know, you don't know what the rules are. That's <laughs> Okay, I'm going to back up now. Brady, you want to tell us a little bit about this or just go right into it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I've been, I'm releasing my fifth album on iTunes and Spotify, which I'm super excited about. It's called Homme Dangereux, which is in French. What does it mean? Um, it means dangerous man. I'm oh, not I dangerous, love it. though. I'm actually, I don't think I am. <laughs> well, um, who knows? Yeah, it's a mystery. How do you, know, say, right? how do you yeah. say it again? Homme Dangereux. Um, don't you go? Yeah, oh, I love that. And I only yes. have one French song on the album. Um, and I'm going to sing this song, which is also off the album. Um, it's called All Alone, and I wrote it. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Also, Mom, Dad, Ryan, Alicia, Harley, Lexi, my nieces, if you're watching right now, you shouldn't be because you should be in bed. But I'm happy to see that you're watching. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Yay, I'm so excited. Cool. All right, anytime you want. Oh, and when you figure it out and it all goes 
down off the city down here we were brown put on all alone and nobody heard me at all oh why can't anybody see me is it cause i ain't so pretty i've got miles and miles of love i want to give out I'm not all alone, <laughs> but well, I mean, we're here. Yeah. We're all together, we're all here. here together. But I love that. All of Thank now, you do you go by Brady or Brady Cudmore? Brady. I actually have um, my name is a registered trademark, so it's just Brady. I love uh, that. And in Massachusetts, we love the name Brady because yeah. Tom Brady is our quarterback. <laughs> yeah. And so you can come closer, Vienna Vicina, Vienna yeah. Vicina, fantastic, everybody. A hand from Massimiliano Sims Woo! and Brady Cudmore, just simply Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So now, Muslimiana, I want to go back to you. You uh, we mentioned George Michael, and I know that you love George Michael. What was it about? Uh, what was it that uh, attracted you to that artist? Because um, we all have people that we're very connected to. A lot of people. First of all, I wanted to say that yes, I started my career as, not as a George Michael impersonator, but doing a show about him. Like actually, I produced a show uh, off Broadway. I did a small. Uh, show about him and about his music about his life okay what i didn't know I'm, that uh, really uh attached about it is like you know the charisma he was a great uh, a great songwriter and i think also a great producer like and uh, we need more george michael nowadays in music so yeah, i agree I believe, with you 100 percent. i took him because i relate to him a lot like i think personally but also mostly like uh in general and I love his music, so I think that uh, many artists like him are kind of. Uh, but I don't want to be sounding like that um, in a in negative way. Like they are no more, they are not anymore mainstream. Mm -hmm. So you know what is mainstream is completely different direction that we're going. So I believe I get close to him because I really also a lot of my music too. I write a lot of my music too. Um, uh, taking as an example, uh, his music is his works mostly. Okay. And many people say you shouldn't do his music because you know you're Massimiliano Sims as an artist, but maybe that's true. And then that's the step that I'm taking moving forward because I did already two shows about his life here in New York, and now I'm moving forward, like you know, doing more of my music that relates to him. Yeah, but you know what I I feel, and Brittany, see if you agree with this. I feel that sometimes we're in different pockets at different times in our lives. And it, 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 in that particular time in your life, it is important to do that show because that artist speaks to you. And then you you go to a different level from there. But I think that you should go with your gut for most of the time. And then once we, it, it's oh, there's an Italian word, sfogare, right? That I love. It's like to express, it? I mean, express, express, but it's like to like explode, basically. Yeah, but it's, it's a good thing. Like, if you forgot it, you get it off your chest. Yes. Yeah. Right? My yes. mother always used to say when I'd get so upset, she'd say, you need to disfogare. It. Yes. It's like you have to you have to get it off your chest. Yes. And I feel that music is like that. Yeah. And as artists, we're, there are different times in our lives, and I don't know if this has happened to you, where you just need to say what you need to say. Yeah. Right? Have you, have you seen that you've gone through changes? Absolutely. expressing yourself okay. yeah and i think a lot of it too like i think it's funny because a lot of times we think about doing covers and we go well you know why are we singing that song and a lot of times it's because maybe it's the, the exact message that's in our heart right that we'd like to express our take on it because it's inspired us in a way yeah I mean? absolutely um, and then when it comes to my own music i feel like I, i've written so much i mean i've written a lot of songs and i find that 
though some of them sound the same. <laughs> well, me uh, too, because I tend to be drawn to the similar key. Yeah. I like I love the key of G. So I will very often I'll find myself there in someone like a Darius or my my uh, um Lynn Portis is my musical director. She's very good about guiding me in a, you know, to evolve to something different. But yeah, we are we do tend to do that. Yeah, but. and they always have a different meaning. You know? Right. So sometimes that will happen. It's inevitably going to happen. And sometimes you record something that sounds almost exactly like something else. And you have to go, well, got to scrap that one. Right. Um, because it's in our head. Yeah. Yeah. But we're inspired in different ways. And sometimes, you know, the real gem, I think, that we find when we're writing and working on music is just that song that speaks to us, whether it's our own song or it's somebody else's. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's like, I, we've all mentioned Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. I was so inspired by him yeah and it seems like both of you have yes. been as well yes. and uh i feel because one of the reasons i love his music is he's so connected to it mm -hmm. and and what you just said and you and i think that this goes back to what you were saying massimiliano is that when you are moved by other people's words there's nothing wrong with that that you're still connected to it so as an artist your your feeling about those words comes through mm -hmm. Sometimes people just sing songs and they're just singing them. You can tell the difference. It's like, no, what's your interpretation of that song? Even it may not be yours, but like my favorite song that I ever, ever heard in my life is Gravity by Sarah Bareilles. Mm -hmm. I didn't write it, but it speaks to me more than anything. Mm -hmm. And when I sing it, I'm completely in it. And mm -hmm. I love that, you know? So, um, right. Would you say that? Oh, you yeah. people are writing things. Ma Mandar Mandaris. Mandaris. Yeah, Anyone Sir Duke. <laughs> okay, name your favorite. Okay, thank you, Mandar. Great question. Name yeah. your favorite uh, Stevie Wonder song. Yeah. How about you go first? Love is in need of love today. Oh, that's a great one. Love's in need of love today from uh, Songs in the Key of Life, yeah. right? Yeah. How about you? Sir Duke. Sir Duke. It has a big meaning for me, for sure. Um, I was in a show band back in, back in Prince Edward Island with Brittany Banks, who I love. She's an incredible performer. Um, and with Christine Raman, we had this whole thing. And I, I was like the black sheep because I wasn't a part of the band program, started a couple of days in and they're like, you don't read music. <laughs> what are you doing in yeah, this class? Yeah, I don't class? read very well at But all. they still, they ended up bringing me in to be a part of the show band because they're like, well, you still sing and right. we're well, going to an it. exception for you. So. I know, that's the thing with singers, you know, it's yeah. like we just, and you know, it's funny, uh, Stevie, Won I love, oh, I think Overjoyed is my favorite Stevie yeah, Wonder. Yeah, yeah. But then I was also thinking of Ribbon in the Sky. So I mean, there's so many. Oh my God! But Overjoyed, I think, is is my favorite Stevie Wonder song. Yeah. Um, we should we harmonize can... "Love Is in Need of Love" today. Do you know it? Yeah. Do you know "Love's in Need of Love" today? No. Um, <laughs> it's, like, it's okay. Maybe at the end we will. You'll you'll you could pick, probably pick up the harmonies like that. Maybe Muslim Miliano, you'll sing it as we go out and we'll harmonize with you. Oh, yeah. I think that that would be beautiful. Okay. And you'll pick it up in two oh. seconds. All right, so Andrew Holmes has joined us. Leo, you love me. You love me. He's saying, do you love me? Leo, you see what happens? They start talking to each other. <laughs> okay, let me check the time. Um, all right, and it's already 9.30. Mm -hmm. So now, Massimiliano, what you did a George Michael show, and you had a, a band, and a whole band and everything, right? Yeah. Backup singers and... Band and a gospel choir. Wow. And I got also a harp player as well. A harp wow. player. Yeah, my intention is to do next... I mean, I'm, I'm moving towards, like, more doing it to give a story to the show. Okay. So, I, you know, actors, dancers involved, and also... I'm gonna have an orchestra playing, so that's my my goal for this project. Wow, Here. that's amazing! Yes, yes. Yeah, that is amazing. So that's a very big goal. I want to spread his legacy, you know. Yeah, but that's wonderful. I, I love it. that. Someone speaks to you, and and you want to continue the you want to continue to have other people enjoy yeah. the way you felt when you listened yes. to him. Mm -hmm. I am a huge George Michael fan, so you got an audience right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and Brady, you're working on an album, you said? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on various projects, but my album, um, I've been working on it for everybody that's watching back home, you're probably like, yeah, you've been working on it for a long time. That's it's, what happens with albums. Yeah, it's been four years of working on this album, approximately, and I have all the songs, I have all the pieces, um, I also do production as well. So oh, I play, you do? Yeah, I play drums, piano, guitar, and then I sing, dance, and act. Oh, wow. So it's difficult whenever you're trying to be involved in all the process because then you kind of, you're it's doing hard, everything yeah. yourself. You know, so. Sometimes you have to step out of it and just like, that's what I do with my musical director, Lynn. Lynn Portis is so great at like, I will sometimes have to step out and she will tell me, 
you know, what she thinks. And I completely trust her. Joe Gullah has joined us. Michael Woolley has joined us. Oh my God. Oh, Rena, you love Overjoyed too? Me too. I think it's beautiful. Um, sometimes, listen, I'll, I, it, it, there were years where I was writing songs like crazy. And then other years where I would write one and then just walk away from it and do other things. I think that's what it is about being an artist. So with that said, if you, when you're not singing, Massimiliano, is there other forms of art that you enjoy being part of? Yeah, I do actually. Um, I, I was born in fashion. My dad, he used to, I mean, he's still in fashion. My mom used to be a model back in the days. And, wow. And I love yes. this. <laughs> so, because this is what I learned about my friends that I didn't know when we do the show. I didn't know that, but that makes sense because you're a sharp dresser. I always say that about you. Thank you, babe. <laughs> so your your dad was in fashion and uh, so i grew up with it i grew up like surrounded by beauty and my mom's like she's very she she looks at aesthetics for her is everything so mm. i grew up with that uh, sense of the say and i'm very thankful about it and right now i mean i'm a designer i mean uh, i'm a designer and visual merchandiser too visual merchandiser is like more a brand i take care of brand image for a retail for brands like fashion brands. Oh, so, okay. That's, really cool. that's what I do. Like, you know, I give a new image of it's amazing. every brand. Like I do work on photo shoots, styling, I do everything related to it. So that's all because we talk about on the show is about we celebrate creative people and the, the reality of that, the reality of living, thriving, surviving as a creative person, not just in New York, anywhere. And especially you guys are from other places. Mm -hmm. So and Brady, you do besides playing the guitar and singing, what is another art form that you love? I love doing graphic design. I do a lot of drawing on my, my iPad um, and I like to like, create in that wow. sense. So like I've been, it's funny, I had an art teacher back in the day that really inspired me. And then I took a break from it for a really long time. And then all of a sudden I just picked up a pencil on a piece of paper after so many years of not doing it. Yeah. And I just was like, oh, you, this is fun for you. It's cathartic. You're Absolutely. getting your art out, you know, you're creating and, and then it just became like something I really enjoyed doing. You know? Yeah. And I yeah. think it, it doesn't matter. Suzanne Mason showing us. Hi, Suzanne Mason. Um, people are clapping. People are yeah. like just loving what we're saying. Cause it's true. I think that any artist I've ever met doesn't just do one thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't know what that other thing is, you know, yeah. but that's why I always ask people. Um, and you're also a dancer, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a show coming up actually at Alvin Ailey, which I'm super excited about. Um, I'm not an Alvin Ailey dancer, but okay. I get wow. the opportunity to perform at Alvin Ailey. And wow. it's for a very good cause, we're raising money for four different organizations. Okay. Um, this is the, you yeah, do? Yes. Yeah. Dance class, yeah. 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 Wow. Look at this. It's, be it's beautiful. And I love like, it. I it's, love the environment. It's great. It's it great. is. Yeah. It's that's very a... up, like, you know, it's like very great. To yeah. Out there um very supportive very yeah everybody's yeah and it's just it's a very professional atmosphere and people are very kind and mm -hmm. um we're doing it uh it's called come back once more so i can say goodbye and i'm singing dancing acting producing and arranging in the show um and we're raising money for um four different it's all going it's all just a you know one off june 14th through the 17th and i love being there with labyrinth dance theater and uh Sa sasha spielbogo but um it's about gay life from 1965 through 1995 in New York City. Wow. So as you can imagine, it's a very uh, historic piece and period in time mm. that we should never forget. Right. Um, and it's perfect because it's so it's World Pride this year. Yes. Yeah. So that is amazing. Wow. There's a lot going on. Yeah. So much going on in the city. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, and Massimiliano, what are you working on that we should? I know you're working on the the. The show right now. Yeah, I'm so, working on doing the show and to bring it. I would like to bring the show and I'm already planning to bring it to Miami, to Los Angeles. Oh, wow. I have some location that might be interested and also in Vegas. And um, I also working on my music as well. And uh, so working on my project. And well, this is it. Like, you know, there is like, um, I have a show actually the, um, on the 31st of May at the Sugar Bar, which is like the Ashford I Simpsons. love so the big. Sugar Bar. Yeah, because you know, Ashford and Simpson's Bar. Yeah, Ashford and mm -hmm. Simpson's Bar. Like they were a great institution like back in the days. Like, you know, I were, love I love that place and I love them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I love I love Valerie. Like she's, she's amazing. amazing. Yeah, she's like one of the best songwriters, I think, in the world. And I like, agree with you hundred percent. And she's such a nice person. Super nice, super humble. The daughters, yes. Nicole and Asia, they are super amazing. 
And I'm doing this show on the 31st of May when I'm... Okay, Sugar Bar is located on 72nd Street between, I want to say, West End... And Amsterdam. Yes. Yes. This is an amazing place owned by Valerie Simpson. Used to be Ashford and Simpson. And uh, yeah. uh, sadly, he's passed away. But she still runs it. And it's one of my favorite places in the city. No, it's really great. Like, what time's your show? We have to... 8 p.m., 31st of May. And actually, the show... I wanted to say that I'm doing this um, for uh, for a cause. Like um, I'm doing this because the son of my one of my good friend in Italy, he was born with a illness, with his uh, connected to his eyes. And okay. So everything will be the vol It's a free show, but everything will be whatever we wanted to give to this. Suggested like, donation. As a suggested yeah. donation for uh, this association. That, that is that amazing. You know, I want to support because I think it's always good. To, it's always good to do, do good. So it's always yes. going to come back to you. No Absolutely. Yeah. Always good to do good. Yes. I agree. Yeah. And and nothing bad is going to come from doing good. No. Nothing, so. you know, people may not appreciate you in that moment, but that's on them. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's none of my business. No, but other people, yeah, there's a saying that says what other people think of me is none of my business. Never. I no. love that. Isn't that a great saying? <laughs> All right, let's check in with some of our Corey Crane in between West End and Broadway. Thank you, Corey Crane. Yes, I love Sugar Bar. So um, let me see. Uh, a lot of our friends have uh, so have joined us. And Leo also put up. Yes, please, whatever you no, like. There was a question. Manda was like, say, hey, Brady. Has ever Brady ever been to Italy? Thank you, uh, Masmu Young. Yes. And if yes was his favorite thing he liked about it. Uh, has Massimo been to Canada? And same question. That's a great Mandar, A plus for this class today. <laughs> he's so he's so smart. Okay, so that's a great question. Have you ever been to Italy? I have never been to Italy. Okay, <laughs> so but you, what's man. your favorite thing about <laughs> about yeah. Italians or um, Italian art or? Well, I mean, I feel like I feel like I get a piece of Italy in New York all the time because it's literally one of the most Italian it's cities true. ever. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, I. I can only say that I find that the Italian culture is incredibly giving and, and very forward too. I feel like there's a lot of honesty. It's like yeah. right cut and dry. Yep. That's in it. a great way. Like, you know, not in like a, you know, yeah, that, that whole tell it like it is. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. That's a great question, man. Love that. Yeah. And uh, Massimiliano, have you ever been to Canada? Yes. I've been once. I've been actually, actually twice. I know one Vancouver, I've Vancouver. Been to Vancouver for work. And I found it very similar to Milan. I don't know, maybe the atmosphere, but, a lot of Asian people there. Like, yeah, I don't know Vancouver. Yeah. The weather was amazing. Nothing against. I love Asia. I love China. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, uh, but I've been once, and uh, it was great. I mean, it was for work. It was for a couple of days. It was very fast. But I get I get in and get out. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I love. I've never been to Canada, but I love Canadians. Every time I meet someone from Canada, I know it before they even say it because yeah. I find Canadians to be very good-hearted people. And and you said someone used the word humble. You said that about Valerie Simpson. I feel that about Canadians. They're confident, but there's a humility to them and a kindness that I really am drawn to. So thank you, well, Canada. We love you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So we are coming to the part of our show called. We have to say go ahead, keep eating all together. The section of our show called go, go ahead, ahead, keep, keep eating. eating. Oh. All right. So. Uh, what, what does this mean? If you've never been on the show, you're like, what the hell is she talking about? So on this show, I was telling Brady earlier, I always ask people, creative people to come on and talk about their creativity. So if for me, I would be a hypocrite if I'm not um, challenging myself every week to be creative. Now, I usually go with the theme too. So this week, um, Saturday is Passover and Sunday is Easter. Easter. And they usually are pretty close together. Now, you were talking about faith. Mm -hmm. And so this, I just love all this stuff. I am a big believer that we really all, uh, we all believe in the same thing. We just call it a different name. Yeah. And if we remove the, the control mm -hmm. of religion out of it yes. and just let our hearts uh, be connected, yes. then this, the, our, our spirituality is so similar. And nothing against religion. I'm, you know, I grew up Catholic. I, I loved my upbringing. Yeah. What, what were you brought up? I'm Protestant. Okay. So, yeah. you know, but uh, my Jewish friends are very connected to their faith. And I think as long as people don't use it as a weapon, that religion is wonderful. Right. And faith 
is it's something that connects everything yeah like i believe that you know like you were saying and actually um i would like to talk about this topic i know it's very but religion is like something that it's great and i believe i was raised catholic yeah and the more i you know the more i grew up the more i made my own mind and the more spiritual it becomes right you i know? was i love that the more you made up your own mind, the more spiritual you became, yes. rather than someone controlling your thoughts. No, that's the thing. That's the opposite of God, yeah. I believe. Yeah, that's the thing, like, you know, when religion is used for, you know, other causes, like to put people against each other, yes, that's then, the worst things that could yeah. ever But then God is absent. <laughs> yes. There is yeah. no God no. in putting people against never, each other. Never, never. I love this conversation. Yes. We're going to continue with So I always try to go cook for with the theme they gave i asked brady and he, i always ask uh, allergies restrictions preferences and um they were pretty open massimiliano did say he keeps his carbs low which i respect my dad was just massimiliano my dad is so much like you and he is very good looking very yeah, stylish nice. she's a hairdresser parroquero. nice okay so what did i do i didn't cook too much this week because because of the holidays i wanted to go with the traditional foods of that now, my friend Peter Ionello, Italian, makes mm. pizza cena mm. or pizza rustica. Pizza rustica. Pizza rustica, you call it. And we used to call it pizza cena. Mama, which, this right. is for you. Exactly. So pizza cena, the word uh, piena really means full. So uh, a pizza that is full of things. But cena is the slang. Yeah. And uh, rustica is rustic, of course. So what goes in a pizza rustica? It's a crust, just like a pie crust. And this is off the hook. He and Peter made three uh, uh, pies. So Peter also, Peter Ionello, you can order pies from him. Uh, and he makes these, and he'll deliver them. He delivered them yesterday. Yeah. So what's in here? It's like a quiche kind of mm. with salamis and hams and prosciutto, ricotta. ricotta yes, uh, ricotta cheese. Cheese. And it's so good. And the yeah. crust to die for. Peter Ionello, I cannot say enough about your pizza cena, pizza rustica. <laughs> I have full little pies in there, but I just wanted you to see the inside of that. That is a very traditional Easter uh, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that's usually the only time I have it is at Easter time. Now, I wanted to honor our Jewish friends as well. And as we know, Jesus was Jewish. So, uh, <laughs> okay, so now Muslim Liano did take a bite out of this. So I will tell you, so he, he was so hungry. He's so cute. And he didn't know that it was our display plate. But what did I, I was talking to my friend, um, Liz so Goldenberg, good. and I said, what are some traditional Passover foods? So she told me a bunch of them. And then what she, uh, my bells and were going off in my brain when she said brisket, because I love brisket. So I uh, wanted to get a good, a really good brisket. And I, I actually bought one at uh, Best Market in Harlem because they make a really good brisket. But what I did was then I doctored it up and I made the gravy from scratch. So uh, without the bite that Massimiliano took, <laughs> this is a brisket. That's okay. A, a brisket <laughs> that's been uh, braised and cooked. And uh, I made a delicious gravy with onions and garlic and um uh what else did i put in there onions and garlic and peppers and all kinds of provencal spices i could so taste the onion this you could taste the onion i love onion i'm a big it. fan so this also has chives on it okay, okay. go ahead Maria, can, I, can, I, can i say something yes please because actually your gravy yeah I don't know if you ever eat in italy this pasta called pasta la genovese Basta you know, genovese, pasta no. genovese is, mm -hmm. is done with a, a lot of onion, like you know, like for and you cook the onion for six hours and oh. becomes something like this. So when I try it, I just want to say something for maybe there are Italian over there that you know I want to suggest that pasta la genovese. It's so good and it, mm -hmm. this is like pasta, like genovese. pasta genovese. I put a lot of onion in there. I like so onion and garlic. Better. So it's a lot of that, and I put a uh, little red wine. <clears throat> In yes. there too. Yeah, that's yeah. the sauce that you do. You know, like also pasta I yeah. want to add some. No, I love it that you said that. Yeah. Thank you so much because I was just going with what I wanted to eat. Yeah. yeah. What What did I and with a beef broth, like a nice so beef good. broth, and uh, uh, you know, flour and all that stuff. So we're having that. I have a lot in the kitchen. I'm sure now, my dad's watching right now. Like and he's loving food. it. Food. Yeah. Yeah. Food. Well, we have my to listen. Incredible. Product. That's how I learn my guests in. And that's also, I reward <laughs> myself with food at the end of the show. Love that. So now this I have made, I leaned Italian on this pretty. I hope it's okay. Yeah. So I have a, a, a spring mix uh, of, of lettuces and all that baby, all the baby spring um, lettuces. And then I put a little bit of, um, uh, iceberg in there as well. Then I have radishes, I have baby cucumbers, and I have vine ripe tomatoes for our Italian friends with oregano and basil is in here. 
Mm. I am going to do a basic uh, balsamic vinegar with an extra virgin olive yeah, oil with a little bit of lemon. That's it. I'm not going with the fancy mm -hmm. oils. I mean, all of uh, um, less is more. Less is more with this because I have all these different spices in it. I'm squeeze a little lemon on there, a little salt and pepper. We're ready to go with that now. Because it is Easter, of course you have to have Easter candy. This is our dessert, mm -hmm. our Easter candies. I'm using my Sylvia Santoro um, Lennox bowl that she gave me. So here we have our little Easter candies, and I got these delicious little sugar cookies. Ugh. Look at these so guys with little nice. sprinkles, our our uh, sprinkles, um, Easter sprinkles. Now I got to tell you, this made me cry. Literally, I cried when he came in. True, right? And la verdad. So, la verdad. Uh, so Massimiliano came in and uh, he brought something in a bag. And I was like, oh, what did you bring? He brought me what my dad used to bring me. And my dad is still alive, thank God. My, and I spoke to him yesterday. He's great. He used to bring me this when I was a little kid. And do you know that he still gives it to me? Even though I don't make it home for Easter every year, he buys it and saves it for me. So that when I do go home, it's still there. And this is, <clears throat> Massimiliano, I want you to talk about this egg. It is a, basically, it's a, we call it uh, uh, uovo di Pasqua. It means like es, Over, is, Easter egg. Basically. Easter egg, right. And in Italy, it's very famous because usually during Easter time, especially for the kids, but, you know, even the adults. Adults. Because now they do for everybody. Like, you know, there is the high one, like with the, and then what is, what happened is it's chocolate. It can be. The, the most delicious chocolate. The most delicious Star chocolate. chocolate. Actually, in Napoli, where I come from, there is this place called Gayo Den. So good. And inside, uh, you open the egg, uh, like the Easter egg. Inside, there is a little surprise. Yeah, you know? I love Which it. I remember when I was a kid. I was it's a big so deal. To grab it, you know. This was a, such that. an Italian tradition. Yes. I cannot tell you. And I didn't get it. I didn't. <laughs> but Massimiliano brought it to me, and I literally started. I teared up. It's true. Because it was this was the symbol of Easter for me when I was a kid, and my dad would, and my dad still. I am not a kid anymore. I act like a kid, but I, my dad still buys this for me and he is in his eighties and this is what he gives me for. And I love it. And he will give it to me when I go home, I'm sure in a few weeks. So thank you. Massimiliano. Extra dark chocolate. And the truth is that it's thin too. It's not like a thick chocolate. It's like, you can crack the egg easy and then it doesn't sadden. So now, what do you think? Was there something, um, but that's a specific Italian thing. Now, your family, you say, are they French? Canadian? No, no, no. no. I just, just actually, it's so, all my courses were in French, but it's such a great country. I think you have to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, you can take the immersion program if you can, you know, decide to. And I was going to take Gandhi and that, and my mom and dad were like, mm, pick one. Yeah. So, I picked French, and I'm so glad that I did. It's just so that for the so beautiful. Um, Let's get away from the Easter thing for a minute. Now, uh, uh, Bill 
Bobby just said and said that the sand went bad. Is everybody, is the sand okay? No one else has mentioned it, so I think it should be okay. Sometimes, I don't know, who knows. I just got my internet. Yeah, maybe, I don't know if it was too much. I just got my Wi-Fi after, but the sand, uh, uh, spaceship, and, okay. Uh, anyway, the sand is off. Okay, sound is not good. Okay, so hold on a second. I'm going to play the sound. Although we only have a few minutes left to our show, believe it or not. Okay. I'm going to play with the sound that way. This way. That way. Hold on. Hang on, everybody. I think it's good on the radio end, so it's just on the Facebook app. Is it better now? You guys, is the sound a little bit better now? It happened when we put the food back. That's weird. I don't know. I think I might have a... Alright, so we'll just keep going because we have a little bit, uh, reset the sound. Okay, so the problem with, I'm trying to fix, okay, we're going to keep talking. Yeah. We're going to keep talking with the sound, this is okay. This should help a little bit. Did that help at all? Okay. Uh, well, just hang in there, you guys. Uh, and maybe that's okay. Someone said, alright, so we're going to keep, Alright, we're going to keep talking because the radio station, we're still linked into the radio station. So, some, hi Peter and Agnella has joined us. He's the one who made the pizza Mustafa, which we also called pizza. Thank you, Peter, very much. Yeah. Pizza Kena, and he is Italian, so, um, Jimmy, how's our sound over there? Is it okay? I just want to make sure. I, don't, I think I might have to invest in a new microphone. I don't know. I was kind of avoiding it. I got uh, bumped up. Internet and maybe loose connection. Okay. All right. So let me see. There's that. I'm jiggling it. Is that any better, you guys? I hate when this happens. Yeah, we love you too. We love your pizza. We love your pizza. And we're going to eat in a little while. And as I said, Massimo, I only took a bite out of my, uh, my beef brisket. I thought it was adorable. You know who does that on the The game is too hot. Okay, so there you go. How's this? Is this a little bit better? I just lowered the game. A little bit better? All right, this, well, what are we going to do? We're going to kind of keep rolling with it. We have about four minutes left to our show. So, um, I always ask this, I like this question because we want to leave people with something. So, Massimo Rana, if there is someone listening out there that is thinking about moving to New York, or going into the arts, um, what advice would you give? Uh, you just don't think about it and just do it. I mean, that's what happened to me actually. You know, when I moved to America, I just didn't think about it for almost ten years. You know, like so. Really, like when you say do what the best says, it's true because it's, no matter what the 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 reward is true. The process could be a little bit painful maybe, but then you know, the reward is good and you know it's gonna be great. So just do it. Just do it. That's it. And Brady, what would you tell people? I'd say stick it out. And this is the thing. I've been living here for like 11 years now, and I think that the most important part is that if you have a dream in your heart, or if you have any, um, there's, there's just certain sensations of feeling inside of you, go with it, no matter what it is. And you have to come to those places where it's very easy to be distracted or seem like maybe you're not going very far or doing the right things. But it's a test study that, that rewards you in so many other ways. And it's so much more worthwhile to just stick it out, keep your, you know, you know, your head to the pavement, or not head to the pavement, but the nose to the nose to the grindstone. Yes, the grindstone. Yes, exactly. Hey, if your head hits the pavement while you're at it, so put be it. Back it up and put a band on. Yeah. Okay, now Leo has put up uh, Brady's YouTube. As we go back, you guys can also after the show go back and check everything out. Uh, oh, uh, Dave Dennis says, "Kate Bruce says hi, Brady. She's shooting at Sands Point." Uh, for the affair tonight. How exciting. The sound, okay. So the sound, I think, is fixed again. All right, so uh, Rick Horn, thank you for the advice that pain was too high. I think sometimes when we're, um, different things are happening, but I, I think it's time to invest in a new microphone. And this is a great mic. It's a Mac mic, but it's time. Um, so just keep, keep, I always say the same thing. Keep doing what you're doing. And also, the advice I would give people is don't compare yourself to don't get in your own way because I think we tend to uh, as artists we overthink things. Yeah. Just really follow follow your gut, mm-hmm. follow the flow of creatively what is coming through. Be more like a, an 
instrument and, and let your creativity play you. Because I think rather than say, I should be writing this, I should be doing, don't stop saying I should. Make a list of things you want to do, and uh, when you, have, you feel that you that don't have a creative bone in your body, do other things. Clean your house. Um, you know, uh, change something. Change something in your living room, whatever it is. Um, sometimes it's doing a mundane task that gets your, your creativity going. Don't, or go to a show, go see someone else. And never be, and don't sit in the audience and ever be envious of someone else's success or creativity. We are all actually exchanging energy. We influence each other. You know? So I believe that has a lot to do with it too. Hey, Jimmy Bell, how much time do we have? Where are we going to have? A minute? A minute and a half? Okay. So we want to remind you that we are here on on Radio, on digitalmedia.com, on digitalmedia.com. You can listen live on, on your computer. And also, this goes into a uh, podcast. It's a different microphone, so it will sound different than the one that's going to that static. Uh, Spotify? Um, um, what is it, Jimmy? One minute. One minute. Okay, thank you. Spotify? iHeartRadio and Spreaker. It'll probably be available within the next 12 hours, so you can just check. And uh, this is episode 92, and so all my other episodes are up there. So please feel free when you're listening to uh, go back and check out other episodes. And usually I list the people's names. But people's names aren't there. It means that I did the show and had problems usually. Um, and I also am a singer and songwriter. I have a website. It's reagentfilly.com. And so please go and check out my music. You can also download it. And support your local artists. Tell people, um, you know, tell people with your with the presence in the audience that they are doing the right thing. You know, and and that's all I can say. It's just important to keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Muscle Million of Sins. Thanks. And thank you, Brats of Enough of Cavalier. Will they ask them? And Brady Cadmore, Brady, just, uh, how are we going to find you now, Brady? Um, you can find me at uh, Brady Square, which is a, a tax square, and then also find me at Brady.org. Um, Brady.org. Brady. 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 Okay, Mr. Yeah. how will they find you? Uh, uh, you find me on Instagram, on Massimiliano Chins, M-A-S-S-I-M-I-L-I-A-N-O-C-I-N-S, and I have it on my website, where I might be going. Okay, thank you, everybody. Bye. We love and appreciate you. Thanks for coming back week after week. Bon Pascua!